I hope that worked. I hope we're alive. I'm alive. Did it work? Did it work? I try to play guitar at the start now. <clears throat> that was a Squire Sonic uh, Strat HSS that I just picked up yesterday. Is anybody in? Who's in? Who's in? Hello? Hello, hello? Hello, hello? Anybody here? It's working. Check the chat. Um, Richard Clarkson, Rubbish Guitar Bloke, Scott Bogfoot. Hello guys, how we doing? Cal Bean, the Rocco Cat's in. Thank you for coming, mate. Richard, I've said Richard, but thank you, Richard, for coming, mate. Uh, John Channing, hello, mate. The Lamb's in. How you doing, mate? The Chimp is in. Chimp number one. Missed you Monday. Oh, Lamb. Yeah, my, my rehearsals are back on Monday nights now, so. Yeah. I managed to catch like about 10 minutes and then I get picked up. Lucky me for getting picked up. But uh, we'll get back in the flow of things again. These rehearsal schedules ebb and flow um, but I hope you had a great show mate <clears throat> evening Peter Collins how you doing mate uh, Dinger63 how you doing mate uh, Gary Hill's here as well great stuff and we're live and kicking good news Scott Bogfoot cheers all Claire B hello hello Claire how you doing thanks for coming Gary Hill you're not getting a picture <gasps> oh! Stephen what the call the top yo is there no picture tell me the truth what about this no this one it's Gary having me on. What are you up to, Gary? Tell us. Life Balance, Dave, how you doing, mate? Did I just say hello to you? Hello if I didn't. Hello, Derek Clacton, how you doing? Great to see everybody's in. Thanks for coming again. Um, I might have explained before that on the Thursday live streams, uh, every second Thursday, I do some lessons from home. So it's uh, very <clears throat> tricky to get organised every second week, which is this week. Um, so I didn't write any notes, zero notes other than I know we're talking about pick cards today and I'm going to talk a wee bit about that Squire Sonic because it's interesting and whatever else will come up. <laughs> hello Pete77's in, hello and the video's good, thank you Scott, uh, sorry Pete77, hello mate. Uh, Lamb saying we're all good, great, R White's, hi there, hello R White's, thanks for coming mate. Mark Greening, finally got to join, evening all, thank you for coming Mark, hugely appreciated mate. Uh, Peter Collins is suggesting to try the refresh. Hopefully that worked. Your YouTube is playing up. Drat. Dastardly YouTube. What can we do? Mississippi Blues, hello mate, how you doing? Thanks for coming. Right, um, we'll get stuck into the pick guard chat. No, let's catch up on what I missed, because I just said hello to everybody. Oh, I didn't miss that much. So <laughs> not that there's missed much, I mean there's not as uh, much history of comments as I thought there. <laughs> um, Right, Richard is saying, that would be a great game, Scott. My favourite plastic combs are anything I can use wax paper to play kazoo on. When I had giant hair metal 80s hair, I needed a pick, but now... Oh, combos, never mind. Combs and combos. I actually know what you're speaking about because I did see um, Scott's comment earlier. Uh, it's not there for some reason now, but uh, I've seen it earlier on today, this afternoon. And he was saying, uh, what I could do is put up the silhouettes of some pick guards and get you guys to guess what they are. But like I say, every second Thursday, I just don't have the time. So I didn't get a chance to get any of that going. Sorry, Scott. And uh, Richard's got his combs and combos sorted out, so that's good news. Uh, rubbish guitar bloke is off. Have a great live show. We'll have to watch you later. See you later. See you later, mate. Thanks for dropping in. Um, and Scott Bogfoot, cheers all two weeks in a row that I'm off work. Off work? Off work early enough to catch the show. Thanks for coming, mate. Usually appreciate it. Um, Richard Clark got Steve on Thursday afternoon and Phil on Friday. If we can fill a few more days, I won't have to work at all. Well, you've got... What have we got? We've got, got the whole week. So you've got John Robson on Friday. Got Budget Guitar Show Sunday. Let's not forget in the middle of that. The Lamb, who's here right now. Live streams on Monday nights, 7 o'clock. Johnny's on at 6.30 now on Sunday. John Robson, 5 p.m. You've got the studio rats on a Wednesday. Um, apart, this is the only live stream on a Thursday. So this, this is all there is to come to. So just make sure you're here. Uh, three Chord Dave on Saturdays. Um, yeah, I think he's on later, 10 p.m. Irish time. It's busy, busy all these live streams. It's hard to keep up, but it's great. Love it. Uh, right, okay, so it's everybody saying hello. Hello, everybody. Great stuff. Glad to see everybody's here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay. I miss it, boys, we've got that. Yeah, Mott Hoople, Evening All, Perloid and Tortoisey. 
but really want a red one for my black square telly a la Wilco Johnson. Perloid and torty, tortoisey. Oh yeah, yeah, I get you. I hear you. I could see it now. Uh, very rasta looking tonight, Steve. Thank you, guy. Yes, that's exactly what I was going for. Or maybe not. <laughs> Zach84, hello, Zach. Thanks for coming, mate. And Yurtg, Yurtg01, hello. Thanks for coming, Yurtg01. Is my pronunciation on point? Is it all right? Um, Mark Jones, hi, Steve. First time here. Thanks for coming, mate. Hugely appreciated. It's great. Great all you guys turning up. And the game dance here as well. Hello, guys. Let's give Steve a thumbs up. Game Dane. Let's get you moderated. Why has that not happened before? Uh, add as moderator. Standard moderator. Boom. Done. Game Dane's got a channel as well. Check it out. Also, guitar stuff. Everybody likes guitar stuff. Richard Clark, you forgot the lamb. I just heard about him here. I subbed, but we'll go hit the notifications. Yeah. Can't miss the lamb. Great stuff. Right. Okay. I'm going to pull up the thing. You know what I mean? Technical terms. Um, pulling up the thing. Oh, hold on. Eargy, just call me Eric. I will try my best to remember Eric. I'm like the worst at this. We short story about that. Um, when I was at the Birmingham Guitar Show the other week, I got introduced to two of the guys from the jet booth. So here's what I'm saying. Tom, who was uh, working like retail kind of side of things. And Lee, who is like the, what is Lee? Lee is the instrumental sales and marketing, marketing guy. So I was speaking to the two of them. So Tom and Lee, and like I forgot their names within seconds and had to get them to repeat them two, three times in the same conversation. My memory just does not work. Okay, where are we at? I'm bringing up the thing. Does this work? It's the right one. Woohoo! Right. Okay, this was the um, community poll this week. And by the way, I've now gotten a rhythm of this going. Uh, I think I'm going to be putting up the community polls every Tuesday. And you might notice that I put them up stupid o'clock in the morning. I put them up at like, well, I schedule them the day before. 5.15 a.m. I don't even know why I'm telling you that because no one's going to wake up for a... <laughs> I want to vote first in the poll about pick guards. So yeah, the polls are related to the live stream, which now has a name. Hold on, let's get this on. The live stream has a name. Uh, I forgot it already. What's it called again? Hammering on about... And then pick guards today. Last week it could have been strings, picks, uh, atlases. No, no, we'll keep it guitar related. But it's always going to be hammering on about. Because that's hilarious, isn't it? Right, anyway. I was struggling for a name. I needed something. It came to me. It seemed like a good idea at the time. And then I spent about two hours picking the font. Uh, and now it's probably not the best name. But hey, there we are. Right, sorry, let's get back to it. So this is the results of the poll from Tuesday. Pick guards, what's your favourite combos? Now, this was surprising for me, these results. I did not expect torts to be so popular. So the tort guards were 41%, black 14%, white cream mint, etc., which is a large proportion of colours that could come under that, 34%, and 11% is other slash none slash let me know. Uh, and let's get a look at some of the comments here. Hold on, can I pull this up? I think I can. Yes, I can. There we go. Right. Where will I read it from? I'll read it from here. Does that look weird? No, I'll read it from here. Right. So, King Stumble. I used to have a 1962 precision bass with a torty guard, and I've loved them ever since, particularly on sunburst, white or black, and red, as long as it's Fiesta red. Can't argue with that. Good shout. Um, and GRB Aquatics. Really wanting a tortoise pick guard on white grunge master guitar from Artist Guitars. After he said that comment, I went and checked them out, and you do get them. It looks very Cobain-esque. Very cool. BPC, it depends on the colour of the guitar, but for most guitars, good torque guard makes it pop. Yes, it can do. Now, a red or brown torque, that's another question entirely. Totally, that could be its own live stream, mate. Uh, red or brown. On sunburst, brown is the correct answer. Answer. Just so you know. Correct answer. It's not subjective. That's it. Okay. Uh, Marsha T, right, Marsha's always like just pumping out the wisdom here. What's she got here? This is a long one. Uh, if it's a pretty top, no guard. I think I like to agree with that. Especially, well, there's tops like uh, Quilty Woods, but I'm also thinking of like your Fender Blue Floral or Paisley's thing like that. I would like the pick guard to either match or be transparent, something like that. Because I like them designs, want to see them. 
Uh, yeah, because you want to see the top, not hide it. The only reason I'd say put a guard on a flamey or quilty top is if someone is rough when they play, but you're usually going to have to put holes in the top to install it. Anyway, it's solid paint, and then it usually needs a little something like a guard to spice it up. And then she goes on to talk about the vibrations on the tops and the glue, but I'm just going to skip through that just now, if you don't mind, Marcia, sorry. <laughs> um, just because I wanted to mention this funny thing you mentioned. So she's talking about the Epiphone Dave Gilmore. The DG335 is the only exception to the above rules. No guard on that shimmery yet solid Pelham Blue, just like Dave Grohl plays his. By the way, I'm supposedly the only entrant and winner in Three Chord Dave's upcoming DG335 giveaway. Go ask Dave, he'll tell you. Muddy H2O already declared, already declared me the sole entrant and winner during Dave's stream. There you go. And that's another stream that I missed on Saturday there because I was gigging. Um, but there you go. Thank you, Marsha. Robbie F, I upgraded my surf green strap with a white pick guard, black pickups, black knobs and a black switch tip. My Imperial Blue Mustang got a white pick guard, black P90s, black speed knobs and another black switch tip. I love the contrast of light and dark colours yet for my LP I removed the pick guard entirely so I could see the beautiful burst. You could see there are six replies because Robbie and I got in a wee conversation and he was telling me, well, the first thing I was saying I disagreed with, right, because I like contrast. I didn't disagree. But I don't always like contrast. Uh, I found out that I only like, can I show you this? Yes, I can. Ah! Oh, this is the wrong one, but I'm going to show you anyway. So contrast being the, ah, oh, I've, I've definitely picked up the wrong guitar. Have have got another one? No. Nah. Okay, so dark pick guard, white covers, right? Or cream covers in this case. I actually prefer plain black and white, but, um, I don't like the contrast the other way around. I don't like the white pick guard with black pickup covers and controls, like the E-Arts. I don't know why, just don't like it. Um, but Robbie does like it, and he said that he put his on a, whoops, on a rig roast uh, with Rhett Shull last year, and I went and checked out the live stream, uh, and it was Chris Shiflett as well, and they were giving him a hard time about the same thing. Um, so yeah, different strokes for different folks and all that jazz. Right, read a couple more of these. Uh, there's Eric, Eric the G. Uh, you used to be a huge brown tortoise fan. I love the turtles too, my favourites. Um, now none of my guitars have tort guards. Mint green is my favourite, I think, but it needs to be the right shade of mint green. Also, I tend to go for the light pick guards when there's a rosewood or laurel fingerboard and dark pick guards with maple fretboards. It's the contrast for me. Yes, contrast. I'm all about the contrast. Animal John. No pick guard for me, even strats. I prefer the ones that have been routed properly for the pickups and the cavity routed through the back. Yep. Uh, it's like jack placement, always on the side or rear mounted like Charvel. Um, don't like it cluttering up the front of a guitar. The big question is, what's my ultimate combo? Right, so, yeah. I can't remember what I answered you, but uh, yeah, I like uh, the dark guards, white controls and a maple fretboard. Contrast. Sometimes. Uh, the Gendain, who's in? Hello, mate. I don't have a favourite. They all go with different body colours. Yes, that is also a good um, comment. Yeah, I pretty much agree with that. The thing with the, the polls and that, there's not always answers. It's just that we've got something to talk about and the stream's built around something rather than just blathering whatever. Uh, John Robson, tortoise shell every time. I know that John Robson is a fan of the tort guards. He's got a couple of nice ones. So yes, especially his new jet. Very nice. Uh, Mississippi Blues, who's in as well? Silver or gold or aluminium? Mint green or none? If I remember correctly, Mississippi Blues, your username is misleading. You are actually in the UK, aren't you? So it is alum uh, aluminium and not aluminium. Uh, just checking. Okay, uh, Claire B is in as well. You can't really vote because it depends on the finish. Yep, there's not a one size fits all solution. Can't disagree with that. You will say that you're pro pick guard in general unless it's John Lennon's style casino or like a cool multiply neck through deal every guitar is improved by a pick guard mm. it breaks up the monotony and gives up the visual and gives some visual interest yes other than like i was saying that uh like the blue floral or the pink floral but i get you granted i'm generally a figured wood hater so flame top prs with no guard is the definition of ugly to me <laughs> kind of agree with you to be honest i'm not big on the i used to love the fancy woods but just go through different stages and phases. I might actually offend some people, but I've never liked mint green guards on anything. I might 
come round, maybe one day. Uh, Amina Ahmed, I hope I've said that right. Amin Ahmed, sorry. To be honest, I picked the tort eyes pick guard, Steve. Yeah, lots of torts. Scott Brower, tort, lots of torts. Uh, Stevie Mack, perfect for this guy, but saying that, I'm in my mid-50s, so gold is always a good metal option as well. There you go. Uh, Vincent Brennan says, go the whole hog and get a Zematis. 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 You say Zematis, I say Zematis. <laughs> yeah, that's it, the big metal things. They're pretty cool. Uh, Clucker, none. The only guitars with pick guard I have are HB ST25 and Yamaha Revstar. The combination of colours on Revstar are Hot Merlot Cream. Hot Merlot with a cream pick guard. I had a look at that as well, mate. That looks pretty tasty. You took the pick guard off the Les Paul the same day you bought it. I hear you. Uh, Carl will be in the Rocco Cut. Carl be in the Rocco Cut, not Carl. I favour none. Most designs can be done with a cavity for the electronics in the back where no one sees a us usually big ugly piece of crappy plastic. Mind you, my perloid one on my base is passable, but only just. There you go. Trey Alexander, I prefer none. Uh, Alan Wilson, not por bleh, not perloid and definitely not tort. See? Differences of everyone, especially not modern tort that has no depth and looks like a photo of salami. There you go. You guys have just got all the info. And then we've got uh, <laughs> Bumcrack Watch Co. None. That's the poll. I wasn't planning on going through the whole thing, but there wasn't as many comments on this one as the last time, so we managed to get through it. Right, let's get caught up with the live chat in real life and uh, see what everybody's saying. Right. What's all that about? Sorry, not what's all that about. <laughs> right, let me start again. What's that like? That format? Do you guys get bored when I'm reading the comments from two days ago? when I should be reading the comments from now. What do you think? What's your thoughts? I don't want to annoy anyone or bore anyone. So the worst thing you can do on YouTube is bore anyone. Like every time you go to take a drink and then never take one. That would be really annoying, wouldn't it? Especially when you're really thirsty. So, right, okay. Thanks for your patience. Right. Um, Scott Bogfoot, I think this is where we're up to. Unrelated to pick guards, but do you think teaching guitar requires the teacher to have as much discipline as is expected of the students? Well, I mean, you're going to have to have, if you want to be a guitar teacher, you're going to be disciplined in the first place to get to a certain level to be able to teach. Uh, that's uh, a good question. There's probably a lot to unpack in there. But yeah, I mean, you have to give a monkeys about who you're teaching. Uh, yeah, I think that matters. There should be as much effort either side. There you go. Or maybe not as much effort. No, probably not as much effort, because it's going to be harder for someone learning, isn't it, for the first time than someone who's teaching all the time. But yeah, a lot to think about there. That's a good question. I'll maybe mull that over a bit more. Uh, budget Pedal Chat. By the way, this Friday's video tomorrow is none other than BPC Budget Pedal Chat. We hooked up at the Birmingham Guitar Show, and we've got a wee chat slash interview slash blether thing. Um, so... That's Friday's video. And yeah, pretty pleased with it. It took ages to edit it. Uh, I don't know why, but I did. It was fun. And uh, the lamb, who I just seen in the chat there as well, we're going to get, uh, we've we've did the same. I've not edited that one yet, but we will get around to it and uh, we're going to see the lamb too. Forces combined. Um, right. Where am I? So sorry, budget pedal chat was saying we recorded the podcast yesterday, so... You're free this evening. I can finally tune into a Thursday live stream. Thanks for coming, mate. And BPC mentioned this one of these live streams on his most recent video when he was talking about the 10-way switch. So that was interesting. Check out. Check out BPC's channel, of course. Um, Carl being the Rocco Cat and pulling off. I've missed you. I'm too far behind. That's the problem, isn't it? Scott Bogfoot, is that on Facebook? I'll follow you. If so, oh, you're talking about the podcast. He will keep you updated. And tomorrow's uh, video, I'll have all uh, BPC's links and everybody can find them there as well. Boss Hog, just as well you didn't go with pulling off with. <laughs> pulling off with, yeah. Uh, all right, okay, I've just got you now with the pulling off instead of the hammering on. Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm behind. Gary Hill, could have maybe called it pulling it off. Yes, there we go. Uh, Anthony, hey, 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 what did I miss? You missed, you missed everything, mate. The whole lot. You didn't miss anything. Uh, we're talking about the community poll from Tuesday. Pick guards, what's your favourites? And we're discussing, or I'm discussing, and I'm getting round to your discussions. The lamb says, cream is good, but not white. I disagree. But you're not wrong. And neither am I. It's all subjective. 
Um, Kelby, someone got hammered and then pulled off. Oh dear. Richard Clark, I love the torts, but they don't seem to go with as much. I end up with off-whites mostly. I know what you mean about the torts, yeah. It's a preference taste thing, isn't it? I mean, a lot of people like to put tort on like surf green or seafoam green. Does that work? I don't know. Maybe it depends if it's a red tort or a brown tort. Hmm. Uh, Claire B, Paisley Blue Flower have clear guards with a little colour around the pickup. Yes, I like that. The reason I'm thinking of that is uh, a company on, uh, I think they've got a Facebook and eBay store, HZ, HZ Guitars, in, somewhere in the UK. He was doing uh, like blue floral, floral bodies, but the pick guards that went with them weren't clear. Uh, I suppose you could get a clear one, but there was more routing than I would like. Anyway. I didn't get one either because they were, <clears throat> I think they were heavy, heavier than I expected they would have been. Scott Bogfoot, the nicest pick guard on any of my guitars is the one on my Epiphone JB355 Tortoise Plastic, but it's also bound. I don't care for the E badge, but the binding makes it real nice. Yes, binding, here we go. This square, this is a bit of a bugbear. I know it's traditional to have the um, just one ply pick guard, but see when it's black on black, I want the white rim to make it pop, right? We'll talk about this guitar in a bit as well. Only if anybody cares. If nobody cares, it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> oh, there we go, back to this. Okay, uh, Scott Bogfoot, it's also slightly swollen instead of just flat, makes it look kind of old, pick cards. Oh, that's the epi one you're talking about. Scott Bogfoot, Jackson's mirrored pick cards look cool too. The mirrored ones yet, they be you bit of uh, maintenance to clean though eh? Craig you have a sunburst strat don't like the white pick guard will a cream beige or similar look better um, you've got a sunburst strat maybe um, it depends what you like and it depends I think on the colour of your knobs and pickup covers um, I, like the lamb and I talked about this as well at, uh, the budget, not the budget guitar show at the Birmingham guitar show um, the ageing uh, is what has these mismatched plastics uh, because they're made of different materials that age at different rates and different colours so pick guards can look cream and control sorry pickup covers can look creamier or yellower or pick guard can be more mint a mix kind of thing but I, I'm not a fan of that personally I know it looks more vintage but I just don't like it um yeah try stuff out Craig you can mock up some pictures on like a uh, photo shop or paint or something or just google some pictures of uh, different combinations and see what you like uh, Eric I have a Fender Duo Sonic HS in Daphne Blue I love Daphne Blue it came with mint green pick guard and white pickups I changed it to black pickups and it looks so bloody good well I'll take your word for it mate I would have changed the mint green guard to black but here whatever you like <laughs> budget pedal chap black or tort on sunburst for sure yes black mm. Love it. Uh, Scott Bogfoot, I would love to have something special like a Mika pick guard or one made from a slice of coral. Example number two. I like this guy. This was a wee tele parts caster. Check out this pick guard. What do you think of that? I think it's, is it maple? It's some cheap wood from AliExpress anyway, but they've sunburst it, which I thought was quite cool because it's like a creamy white with sunburst. I liked it. And the control cavity matches yeah anyway that's my parts caster uh where was that that was mika can i find that there it is yeah anthony Everson. i put a white guard on my sire s7 and sunburst as i was going for the look of andy timmons ibanez but generally i'm a boring old sunburst with a red top <laughs> well here you like what you like if you got what you're after you're after andy timmons you got it good on you martin bix I like tort on white or sunburst, so tort on my white P-Base. There you go. It's great that everybody likes different stuff. That's obviously why there are all these different combinations. Um, Mark Greening, tort on my Fienza Red V6. Loverly. Is a Fienza, is that Fiesta? Is that what that is? Or is, it, is that a colour? I don't know. Fienza Red. Nice. Richard Clark, uh, speaking of Scott Bogfoot, you think I'm about to get an Eastman Vintage Junior and they have Bakelite guards. Oh, yeah. Uh, not quite shell, but cool. Thinking about putting Abalone on the Gibson Studio Platinum. There you go. Mark Bix, oh yeah, tort with Fiesta Red. Forgot about that. There you go. Right, Lamb again. Mint green only works on a black strap. 
Right, hold on, take a picture of this. Mint green only works on a black strap with gold hardware. Matching black headstock for bringing people. I'll, check, I'll look into that rosewood neck. Yeah, it's important. Fretboard wood is an issue. I'm on the wrong camera, sorry. Uh, odd materials are interesting. Uh, good talking points. Oh, what did I miss there? Uh, there we go. This is the vibe of this stream, Steve. What, mm, what is this? This is it? Is it good? I don't know. Gary Hill, Steve, I've started getting ads on your streams. Yes, mate. Uh, I, I put this up to the community before if I was allowed to put ads on. And you get three options of ads. You get aggressive, which means an ad every 20 seconds. Or you get uh, moderate, balanced. Or you get, uh, is it conservative or something? Which is like very few. So I went for that one, the least intrusive. So there should only be one ad on the whole thing. Should be. But apparently the way the YouTube algorithm works now is um, every individual will get a different ad at a different time. Um, and they give you the length of ad and the type of ad based on what they think you're more likely to watch, which I'm assuming is none, because who watches ads if they can help it? No way. Skip. Sorry. Uh, chimp number one. The stream has stopped. All good again. Oh, don't know what happened there, but I'm glad we're back. <laughs> I hope we didn't miss anything important. Probably not. Uh, Martin Bix, my surf green tele came black, but I switched to vintage white. Cal being the Rocco cat, always good to hear about your new guitars. Thank you, mate. Oh, and I've got, yeah, got to talk about that soon. And I've got another new guitar. I've got two new guitars this week, although one's coming on Monday. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Claire B, I'm split on the gold and no dies on my surf green Jazzmaster. Oh, is that the 40th anniversary one? Is that the roasted? With the maple fretboard, it might be a bit too yellow, so I might swap it out with perloid. Or if I can find a cool patterned one. Claire, if that's the... Is that the Squire 40th anniversary, Jazzmaster? I've been after one of them. Let me know if you're selling. <laughs> Scott Bogfoot, what's the worst finished texture or colour that you can imagine on a pit guard? On a pit guard. Yeah, well, I don't like mint, so maybe mint. Uh, oh man, some of the... Some of the Jet and Fazley ones... Oh no! Yeah, maybe some of the Jet and Fazley ones, the cream ones that they had initially. They weren't too nice, but I've just thought one of the ones that I really didn't like was um, the e -Arts. Oh, Probably my biggest bugbear. The e -Art NKC3s, uh, I reviewed one of them. I've had three of them, but they have really nice tops. Nice veneers, uh, you can get an orange, blue, purple sort of stained. But they all come with mint green guards. Ugh, like the worst choice you could put on these. And black uh, pickup covers and control covers. Ugh, not for me, didn't like them. Okay, um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, show your new square and why you got a Sonic. Right, okay, I'll, I'll get on that in just a minute. I've got my completers and I'm going to try and catch up with the uh, chat here. Uh, Carl B, neat sunburst, thank you mate. Chimp number one, well said, great Dane. Show your new square and why you got a Sonic. Okay, right, right let's do it then. Uh, hi Steve and your discern discerning subscriber. Sorry I'm late. Didn't you ever apologise, Moto? Thanks for coming. Hugely appreciated. Martin Bix, what are your thoughts on anodized guards look texture? I don't think I would like the texture feel on my fingers, but I'm very strange with things like that. Um, but the look, I think they look quite cool. They look cool when they're worn as well. Like, I like them Paoletti guitars. They're kind of cool. Somebody's got one of them in here. Uh, oh, we're caught up. Brilliant. JK Ultimate, how you doing, mate? Thanks for coming. You love that tracky tap. Tracky tap, that's what this is. Tracky tap. Cheers, mate. Uh, Claire B, yeah, it's the 40th, not going to sell it. It's my baby at the moment. <laughs> uh, I don't blame you. It's, uh, I was late to the party. I should have got one. Right, let's talk about this. So that means the music goes off and switch cameras. And we can... Oh, and the camera's out of focus. And it's back. Right. Well, maybe do something interesting. So check out how new it is. It's this new. Why did I get one? Good question. So... Um, my partner, Yoshi has access to these um, student um, chat things, buying and selling pages. So uh, someone was selling this, and it's like practically brand new, and it still has this wee tag, but it's still got the pit guard cellophane on, they've just took the square sticker off, sorry, I can't see where I'm pointing. And something we can maybe do now is the pit guard cellophane, we'll maybe take that off. Not the pit guard cellophane, the 
pick up cellophane. But here's what I'm thinking of this. So why did I get it? Because it was uh, it was going cheap, hundred quid, hundred ten, hundred ten. Uh, and I thought they're fairly new, be good for the channel, and it's the kind of thing that I could compare price-wise against a Jet, a Fazley, and the other guitar that I've got coming. I'll tell you about that shortly. Um, but initial thoughts. I'll obviously do a video on it anyway, but uh, I just want to tell you a couple of things. One of the reasons that I was interested in this, this isn't the colour I would choose, but because they're thinner bodied, uh, 40 mil, I expected this could be a good guitar for gigging and you're pretty much guaranteed to get a light one. But it's lighter than a Strat, right? But it's not as light as I would expect, expect for it having a thinner body. I think it was like 7.2, 7.3 pounds, which is great. But I want a Strat that way that's full bodied, which you can get. But this is thinner bodied and not as light as I would have liked. So I probably won't keep it. I'll probably um, get a couple of videos out of it and uh, move it on. But I like the uh, I like the frets. Um, the frets are they're like narrow, thin. Um, usually I like medium jumbo, but I, I quite like these. They feel good, but the fret ends are not amazing down here. They're a bit sharp. Not the worst, but not the best either. Uh, I've not got a chance to try the bridge because the trem arm wasn't included, but I'll have one of them kicking about somewhere. But yeah, that was basically it. Sounds not bad. Nobody heard that note, right? So yeah, there we go. Right, I'm going to tell you about the other guitar that is also incoming, and that's probably all the playing for this today. So the other guitar that's incoming. Oh, first of all, the story goes back a little bit further. I I've been trying to sell this synth for ages, uh, Roland JDXI. Hold on. I might have mentioned before. I got that Roland synth uh, a couple of years ago and I uh, only played it for like a couple of months and then I got back into guitar after I was having like a major guitar break. Um, so yeah, it's been sitting about for a couple of years not getting used. So I eventually got it sold, so I got some funds together and then that came up and I thought, yeah, I'll have that. I've been waiting on the Harley Benton uh, ST Modern, but it's going to come out now that I've bought these two guitars, isn't it? And I've spent the money, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, because that should be out any day. Uh, so the Squire Sonic, I thought that would be good for reviews, and then it was on eBay, and for some reason I've been looking at Ibanez guitars again. I do this every couple of years, get into Ibanez, and I got a great deal on one of the AZ, AZES, the AZ Essentials, or the AZ Essentials, the cheaper ones. So that's coming on Monday. So that's going to be great for shootouts with this, or a Jet GS400, it's got cool switching options, um, it's got like the world budget pedal chat was speaking about this recently. So we've got um, five-way switch as normal, but then there's a, another switch that makes the five-way switch do another load of stuff. So I'm interested to see what it's all about because I've tried the three-way switch before. And uh, yeah, just want to check it out. And I might even take the circuit from it, put it in another guitar and then move on the Ibanez. Of course at a reduced price for that reason. but. There you go, that's what's going on. Right, um, where am I? Go back, go back, go back. Right, Anthony Edwardson. Uh, the andonized the guard on my Squire GM is nice and cold when I touch it. There you go. Would I like that? I don't know, maybe. I'm in Scotland, it's always cold here. Claire B, texture on andonized isn't bad. It's, it is weird that they are a bit taller than plastic. Oh yeah, oh, what, what am I talking about? I've got one, I'm gonna show you. It's show and tell day today. I actually put some of my pick guard guitars down here because I thought I'm gonna, I might end up showing these. Show and tell, right, hold on. <clears throat> oh. I'm gonna call this guitar cam from now on. Here we go, this is my parts caster. It doesn't look as good in this uh, camera, but it's Maui blue. It's a lot more vibrant than this. And you see the pickguard andonized purple. I need to get that light out of the way. There we go, look at that. 
Is that no nice? I think it's pretty nice. I like it. Whoa! I'm terrible at figuring out where to put this for the camera. I don't know how mirrors work. It's like that, that light. Anyway, I think it's pretty cool. Gold hardware, would you expect expected that? The whole reason I got gold hardware is, I've never done a video on this guitar yet, but it's got loads of cool things going on. Check this out, anybody know what this is? There we go. Anybody know what that is? What about these? Wilkinson Lock and Saddles. And that is a Villex Jack Booster, uh, mid-range booster. Uh, and the whole reason that this guitar has got gold hardware on it is because this was gold and everything not to match except for these saddles, but we're getting away with that. Anyway, purple andonized. So what do I think about it? That's all right. It doesn't bother me as much as I thought. Actually, I'd prefer it to be plastic. You're right, it is cold, but never really thought about it too much. There we go. And yes, it is higher. Higher. Right. Show and tell. Loads of fun. Is show and tell even fun? It's maybe not fun. Right. Uh, Peter Collins, that's my favourite strat colour, all black with maple board. Yeah, well, yes, I like it. It's not my favourite, but if it's all black, I would want white. Oh, I forgot the mute switch. Oh, don't know what's happened there. Um, yeah, all black, I would like white uh, pickup covers and white controls. Someone said mute switch. Am I in trouble? Have I got some audio problems? The J said mute switch. Right, let's see. Um, oh, what did I miss there? Oh, oh wait, I'm getting something going here. Okay. Okay, uh, Claire B, if you can handle the short scale, try out the Bullet Sonic Mustang. Mine is light as a feather. Yeah, I think we're really maybe talking about this before, Claire. Or was with someone. Um, yes. Interesting. The only thing with the Mustang is I'm not sure I would like the pickup combination. I'd be tempted to change it to HSS. Hmm. And the short scale, hmm, I'd have to try it again. Uh, JK, who's in the chat, I just said me. Um, he has a Fender... Jagmaster, did I get that right? Jagmaster, the Kurt Cobain one. I had a shot of that for a while at shorter scale, uh, but I didn't play it too much to really figure out if I loved it. <clears throat> okay, uh, Martin Bix, it looks great, black and maple. Mm, you like it? Oh, thank you, mate. Uh, Claire B, I'm also loving my Squire 40th G. Oh, sorry, that's Anthony Edwardson speaking to Claire B. You're also loving your Squire 40th GM, although I wasn't using the bridge pickup, so I've put a creamery wide range humbucker in it. Can't put it down now. Oofed. Show and tell my creamery humbucker guitars over there, it's too far away, but um, nice. Those are some expensive sounding chords. Thank you, budget pedal chap. Not as expensive as you might think. Bargain bin stuff. Uh, Claire B, very cool. I'm a little underwhelmed by the bridge pickup too, but not so much that I'm in a rush to replace it. There we go. Mute switch. I hope that's not me. JK Ultima, me. You. What do you mean? <laughs> Claire B, show and tell is fun. Good, I'm glad to hear it. Scott Bogfoot, Steve, after giving it some thought, I came to the conclusion that the worst material to use as a pick guard would be a cheese grater. <laughs> yeah, it probably wouldn't be ideal, would it? Sandpaper also wouldn't be that great. Uh, but yeah, cheese grater is probably the worst. <laughs> Colin Robertson, you're late to the party, but I always liked the mirror pick guard on Nile Rogers' Hitmaker. When I saw Steve Vai last year in Glasgow, he sent beams of light from his mirror pick guard. Cool. That's pretty cool. Oh, actually, that's something I've been seeing recently on eBay and maybe Facebook. Some people are making guitars with infinity mirrors on the front. Have you seen these? Infinity mirrors like what you get in bathrooms and that. Um, is that what they are? They've got lights and stuff in them. Quite interesting. Uh, so, but maybe, you wouldn't think it, but it might even be a wee bit too showy for me. I don't like anything that you've got to keep clean. I like this glass. Shh. 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 Right, uh, Claire B, I was using the rhythm circuit, no sorry, Anthony Edwardson, Anthony Edwardson, you were using the rhythm circuit to kind of have two pickup selections but I wanted to have something bright on tap as I play in a worship band that generally is a pretty dense mix. Yes, brightness is what you need. Mute switch on the strap because of the, it's loud, it's noisy, yes, that makes sense. 
Zach84, that Jack Booster is a brilliant idea. Yeah, it's brilliant, mate. It's really, really great. I would demo it, but that guitar is electronically defunct at the moment. But I will demo it in the future. I've got it on my US Strat as well. I love them. Um, I think it's in a, a Russian guy who made them, but it's an Australian company. You can get them on Reverb, I think. But it's quite expensive for shipping and stuff. But it's a very cool switch. Um... Oh, right, you thought the switch of the input was a mute switch or something. Ah, got you. No, it's a mid-range switch. Very clever. Uh, and it doesn't take any power either. Passive. Very cool. Okay. Cal being the rocker cat and the eyes looks good on your parts caster. Thanks, Cal. I'm very pleased with that. Uh, Eric, yeah, put white covers, etc. on the black Sonic Strat Gilmore style. Yes. Jagstang. Thank you, Richard. There we go. Oh, I've caught up with the chat. There we go. Great stuff. Right. Have I got anything else to talk about? Is anybody still here? Oh no, there we go, there's Daniel Scott in. Daniel's just bit a Fazley kick guitar with a clear pick guard, looks the business. So is it still bare wood with a clear guard? Or have you, or have you painted it? Speaking of which, oh, that's what we're gonna talk about. The amount of projects that I've got on the go that I've not finished yet. Here's my Fazley, it's not a kit, but. I've gotta get that done, the bolt guitars stuff. This is why I put all these guitars up here, right? Um, these are reminders that, for me, and they're going to stay up here. I'm not changing them until I've done the videos on them. Maybe. That's the rules. Uh, HB24, Harley Benton CST24 HB, hollow body. I did the first impressions on that. Uh, I'm, I'm needing to move it on, so I need to finish the, the proper review on it. Uh, the Chapman ML1 Hybrid. I need to do a review on that. I've not even spent much time with it. The Gretsch uh, Electromatic Duo Jet. I need to do a review on that. And in the corner, uh, I don't know if you can see that here, the East Coast uh, Baritone. I need to do a review on that. And, God, there's a few more. Loads of projects on the go. Plus, I'm doing still um, editing all this Birmingham stuff. So, like I say, I've got videos coming out with, uh, well, Budget Pedal Chap on this Friday. And then in the future, I've got interview with the guy from Jet Lee, not that Jet Lee, that's actually one of the jokes I put in the video, um, jokes, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the lamb, we got together with the lamb, so we've got a chat with the lamb, we've got a chat with Johnny Budget Guitar Show, and we've got a chat with Raphael G. Suisse. is that right, and that feels like them all, I bet I'm missing someone, how can I miss someone, well, well we've had the Rob Chapman one up already, um, and we've had the vlog stuff done, so yeah, that's going to be the next few weeks. I'm thinking after the BPC one, I might do a non-Birmingham one just to change up a bit. I've got a couple of vids in the vault. <laughs> I've got a couple of vids ready to go. I've got one on a Fazley Firebird, and I've got the part two of the refinish of that guitar, so actually getting the finish off it. Heat gun versus sander. There you go. Right. Um, Daniel Scott, Fazley, yes. Uh, Bear Wood, oh nice. Um, chimp number one, how many people in the chat have a strap but don't use the trem? Oh, I thought he says don't use them. Don't use the trem. Not me. I love the trem on the strap. Especially on my jet that's got the go-to trem on it. Mmm, love it. Um... Good question though, chimp number one. Daniel Scott, you just used yacht varnish. Oh, that sounds cool. Daniel Scott, you can see wiring and copper shield. Ah, that's cool. The lamb, yeah, don't miss mine. A master class in talking bollocks. <laughs> you know what, I, I did, uh, have I watched the whole thing again? I don't think I've watched it all again yet, uh, lamy. But uh, we'll get something out of it. Yeah, we'll get something. They're short, that's the thing. They're a lot shorter and I have to put intros and outros to them as well. But yeah, all good. And thank you, Lammy, for chatting, you legend, you. How am I getting on for time? We're doing okay for time. <clears throat> uh, Claire B, Strat Trem, worse Trem, but I still use it. Good. That's all I like to hear. It's great. Uh, the game, Dan, have you noticed that Andrei's pick guard makes the pickup sound darker, Steve? It does it on my 40th anniversary Strat. Interesting you should mention that. I remember watching a video where Rabia... Rabia Massad was talking about the same thing on his strat. And no, I've not noticed it because I changed the pickups and the pickguard at the same time. 
So, uh, <laughs> maybe, if it does, um, there are probably ways I could get around that. Uh, the game then. Oh, that was what you were talking about there, with the 40th anniversary strat. Um, actually, thinking of that, Uh, I know, again, then you know Rich Novice Noisemaker as well, and he had, like, the special edition SRV Classic Vibe uh, Squire Strat, and I remember he said that those pickups were, like, really, really dark, so I don't know if it's the, maybe it's some of the Squire pickups they're using, or is it, because it's around the same time, 40th anniversary, or is it the pickguard? You'd have to test it with a, a non-anodized one, see if it makes a difference. Maybe you already have. Scott Bogfoot, I don't really use the trems, but take advantage of the locking system on trem quick guitars. <laughs> nice. Uh, Life Balance Dave, I need to see the Fazley Firebird video urgently. All oh, right, well, they don't make it anymore, that's the thing, so that's why I've not been, like, super um, <clears throat> in a rush to get it out, because it's not something that you can go and buy. Not that it's all about selling stuff, but um, buy it now. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Derek Lacton, your Birmingham footage was very good, well directed and filmed by Yoshi. Thank you very much, Derek. Hugely appreciated. And I will tell Yoshi, she'll be very pleased to hear that. Thank you, mate. Uh, Daniel Scott, I've just built Johnny off the budget guitar show, a guitar, but can't say too much. Ah, it's yourself, Daniel. Uh, I remember he was uh, talking about that in his live stream the other week, so uh, I will not say a word either. Nice. Claire B, stream idea. Which non-strat trem do people like? Okay, let me think. Non strat trem. So, we could be talking Duesenberg. Could we be talking Duesenberg? Bigsby, Floyd Rose, Caller. Uh, I'm, not, I'm just naming trems now, but why, can we, why are we removing uh, strat from the, <laughs> from the conversation? Or is it because nobody likes them? Uh, I don't know. Or, or do they mean like uh, not two point trims? Or just not? Because there's the PRS one as well, which technically isn't a strat. Oh, of course, it's not a strat, not technically. Um, yeah, interesting. Uh, Gary is asking if the lamb, you know, he'll answer you. If you're posting any vids from Birmingham, he did take some footage. One lamb, come on. Claire B, Floyd, Bigsby, Jazzmaster, Jazzmaster Mustang. Yes, got you, okay. Yeah, there's loads, isn't there? Okay, yeah, that's something to think about. I've not got my pen, but I will definitely consider it. Uh, I mean, I'm going to be running out of ideas anyway for these uh, these Paul things anyway. I don't know what to do next week. Right, there's something. We've got like 10 minutes left. Let me know if there's anything uh, that we could you'd want to see for a poll next week. Uh, I'll come up with something, but you might be able to save me thinking of something. <laughs> Uh, Scott would love an Evertune and... Oh, right, okay. Non-strat because it's ubiquitous. I hear you. There you go. Pete77, what is the oldest guitar you own, Steve? Good question, mate. I think it's my... It's not even that old. It's not old. Uh, my USA Strat is 2004. I think that's the oldest guitar. And the Squire Esprit is also 2004. So nothing vintage here. Is that the oldest one? Oh no, actually. My first guitar will be the oldest one. I'll try and pull this out. That's a creaky chair, by the way, in case anybody's wondering. Here we go. First guitar ever. Guitar cam. Check it out. It's a three half size, not three quarter size. Explorer in hot pink, made by artist, but not that artist. So how old will this be? I probably got it when I was about, I got it when I was about seven. Uh, so <laughs> why am I showing you this? Um, but yeah, look at that, look at that ply. Oh yeah, it's like, uh, it looks like a Kit Kat. <laughs> I took all the paint off it because I was not into pink as a young boy. But now I am, as an old man. Anyway, so that'll probably be the oldest one. That'd be like, uh, I'm going to guess like 89 or something. 88. It might even be older than that. So that'll be the oldest guitar, I think. Good question. 
I'll have to think. Um, budget pedal chap, I think we can all agree six screw vintage trims are useless. Well, oh, I keep forgetting to do that. Uh, well, I've not had a lot of luck with them, to be honest with you, and I prefer a two-point trim. But I know that people can get them dialed in to work really well, and a lot of people say that the, the PRS six screw, tre six screw trim is one of the most reliable ever. I'm not a big fan of PRS guitars, so I wouldn't really get a chance to experience that. Well, there you go. Uh, the Lamb. I only have shots of the guitars, really. I wasn't going to because the same guitars appeal, appear in all the other videos. Haha, ha, I got ill and missed the boat, I guess. Unless there's demand. There is demand, Lamb. Demand it. Uh, I sent you some footage as well um, of you and the interview thing. Uh, I could send it again if you need it. No worries. Uh, Carl B in the Rockle Cup. Paul. Uh, voting poll. Would you rather hammer on or pull off? Good question. That's very binary, isn't it? Uh, or slide. Or any kind of slurs that you like. Uh, Richard Clark, is there nothing wrong with my point? Where is Richard Clark? Sorry, what am I missing here? I'll go back. Uh, Looking back, the last thing I've got you saying, Richard, is Jagstan. That I can see here. Maybe missing something. Is there nothing wrong with my... Oh, is there nothing wrong with my six point? You know, I couldn't see that for... And uh, there is nothing wrong with my six point. There was nothing... There was an emoji in the way of that six. Got you. Yeah. Um, there you go, yeah. So you get them dialed in and they can work very well, as far as I know. Trem systems next week. It's looking like it, Scott, isn't it? I'll need to figure out... Uh, how to do it. The problem with the YouTube polls is you only get four options. So, which means you basically get three options and then have to do other that has like a load of the less combined ones. Uh, less popular ones combined. Um, the best deal you ever got when buying a guitar? Oh, great question, Carl. That's hard. That's hard. That's hard. Oh, no, it's no. Fazley Finnecke. FSST 720 last year or the year before, they were selling them for £51. Incredible guitar. That's this is one of them. I mean look how great this guitar is. <laughs> look at that. £51. Well, it was a full guitar at the time, but I've obviously stripped it and got a wee project on the go. But it's pretty much a Jet GS 400 which is my favourite guitar ever. So yeah, I, w I think the cheapest I got one was 61 but I know that some people got them for 51 Alfie, who I just seen for a lesson there, who might be in the chat, he got one for 51 My mate Ben, he got one for 51 uh, The school I worked for, I told them about them, they got them for 51 That was an amazing deal. Um, yeah. Richard Clark, if you loosen the middle four screws, there's absolutely no difference in the trim. Yes, this is a trick I have heard before. Daniel Scott, I put Wilkinson tremolos of AliExpress on all my budget guitars. Nice. Uh, six point trem, Steve. Yes, I, I got you, uh, Richard. There we go. Mm -hmm. I personally prefer the two point. I've had more success with them. But it's mainly because um, the it's the Goto one that I love. The Goto 510. It's just, oh, the best. Love that trem. There's probably other better ones. I've never tried like a Vega trem. Or anything like that. Oh, Claire B, ten pound used bullet Mustang. Beat that. That's a cracker. Uh, it was disgusting, but worth it. I bet you got it cleaned up, though. Eh? Ten pound. That's got to be the best deal. Wait a minute, though. Claire, did you not get a, a Johnny Budget Guitar Show Spider Pig for less than that? <laughs> the J. Is there much of a difference between a two point and a six point Strat trim set to float on the other screws? It's a good question. It's probably a question for someone uh, more experienced than I, but good for bringing it up. Um, I'm a layman and I prefer the two point trim, or I seem to find it easier to work with as well, just having the two uh, sort of anchor points, if you like. Two keys. It's only two things to fiddle with rather than more than two. Six. Uh, <laughs> There we go. Um, what did you say there? Cyborg Guitars then. Hello. Hello, mate. How are you doing? You're late. Ah, it's ridiculous. But you're here. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Thank you all for coming. 
Um, Calvin Rocka, $175 Canadian for... Oh, this was a great topic. We should have brought this up at the start. Or it should be another stream, because we're at the end. Uh, well, near the end. Best deal you ever got on a guitar. Well, I'll maybe save this one for another time, but I'll remember these as well. So $175 Canadian for an Epi Les Paul Standard Cherry Burst 94 made in Korea. Oof. With a little Marshall 10 CD amp. Wow. If only I knew what 175 Canadian dollars meant. Uh... I wouldn't know if that was a good deal. <laughs> no, I'm sure it is. It sounds like it's a good deal. Richard Clark, I find a whole truckload of green and black and silver Gibsons with weird symbols behind the headstock. That was a good... What? Right, hold on. I found a whole truckload of green and black and silver Gibsons with weird symbols behind the headstock. That was a good deal. What is this? What is this? Right, okay. Um... You need to tell me more about this, Richard. This sounds insane. Anthony Edwardson, what are you saying there? Right, you're off. Um, by the way, you prefer this new live stream time. Ciao. Good. I'm glad to hear that, mate. Glad you're here. Um, Gary Hill, what about a deal of the month? Uh, I can't see the last word because of that emoji. There we go. What about a deal of the month post? Oh, you mean like uh, me recommending something that I've seen kind of thing to you? Is that what you mean? That's a good idea. Yeah. Or maybe you just... Rather than try to do it every month, just any time I see something that looks good, chuck it up, share it. £100! Oh, nice one, mate. That is an absolute bargain. Jeez, for an epi. Wow. Richard Clark, the missing Adam Jones. Lol. It was a joke. Ah! See, this is the thing. I'm not clued up on Adam Jones. I only discovered who he was off of Three Core Dave's live stream. Live stream. Uh, he's the... Is it Tool? I think he's the Tool guy. I didn't even know that. I know he's got loads of Epiphones, but... I didn't even know there was a missing one. <clears throat> uh, Gary Hill might give people a heads up of offers that are out there. Good shout, Gary. Yeah, if I come across everything, anything, I will surely share it. Richard Clapp, do not ever take me seriously. Even now? I'm going to take that seriously. Lol. He's got bug foot. Right. Okay, we're almost wrapping up time. So it looks like we've got an idea for a live stream poll next week. So it's going to be some kind of question about trends. I do like your question, Claire. Yeah. Oh. Th yes. Something about the trims. I'm trying to think how we fit it in four boxes uh, of poles. Yeah, but there's loads to talk about with trims. Uh, we'll, we might get bogged down on this uh, six screw versus two point trim for a while, so uh, I'll need to do some research maybe for that. Luckily, next week, I've got more time in between streams and finishing work. Right, it looks like we are finishing up. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're not quite. We've got another deal late in here from Cyborg Guitars. You got an Epiphone LP Cherry uh, for £150 in 2015 from Gumtree. Oof, that is an absolute bargain, mate. Nice. You won't still have that, will you? Or, or will you? I've had a lot of Epis, have you? Uh, Cal B is saying, good night. See you at John Robson's tomorrow night. Yes, we'll see you there, mate. John Robson's 5pm beer o'clock live stream. I will most certainly be there. And then, of course, it's my own upload, 6pm. Me and BPC having a wee blether from the Birmingham Guitar Show. March Madness Trem Bracket. Uh, Claire B, this is good suggestions. Gary Hill. Uh, yeah, not just you, anyone in the group that comes across a bargain. Ah, right, okay. Yeah, right, okay. So how do we uh, organise that? Yes. Okay, we could just make it a segment on the live stream. I'll just ask the question at any point if anybody's came up with... Uh, uh, I'll need to write that down, Gary. That's a great idea. If anybody's came up with anything. Yeah, because I'm always looking for bargains. Always. Okay, right, I think we're all going this time. Uh, Bumcrap Watch Co. We were speaking about you early, mate. you got to mention. You're going to have to watch and catch up. Uh, good to see you, mate. We're just on the way out. Um, Richard Clark, thanks, Steve. Great fun. Thank you, Richard. Thanks for coming. Grandpa Joe, enjoy the rest of the evening. Thanks for coming, Grandpa. I maybe missed saying hello to you earlier. Cheers to all. Thank you for coming. Uh, right, I'm going to try this thing that I can never get right. Right, here we go. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Till later.